In this video, I'm gonna beat Plants vs Zombies 2 using only plants from PVZ1. Part 5 The Lost City. This time, we won't have any new plants to use for our today's challenge. That's gonna be a very interesting experience. If you haven't watched the previous four parts, I highly recommend you do it. Without further ado, uh, let's continue our challenge. Enjoy! The Lost City is one of my favorite worlds in PvZ2. Not because of the local plants, not because of the unique zombies. I'm a big fan of the local atmosphere because Plants vs Zombies 2 is about time and that world revolves around it. The Lost City is based around Mesoamerica at the beginning of the 20th century, with the zombies from a modern era of exploration. What an amazing time to live! Day 1 – The Introduction I decided to begin with classic plants, the kernel pult and pea shooter. After planting columns of them, I decided to add a column of watermelons, and just to be sure, I planted a column of cabbage pults. And of course, after beating that level, I received my very first and simultaneously useless plant. Red Stinger. Day 2 was a good chance to get more sun at the beginning of the level by digging up the pre-planted red stingers. We don't need them. We prefer plants from PVZ1 and I decided to dedicate that day to the winter melon. I can say for sure that it was a good decision. Day 3 was a conveyor belt level and they gave me no choice except using the local PVZ2 plants. Let's just skip it. Day 4 Ok, they pre-planted a walnut to show me how the excavator zombie works. Poor Shagrot, he wouldn't approve of that move. Later, that world surprised me for the first time with the parachute train. They have almost eaten my watermelons, but fortunately, everything worked out. Day 5 was another conveyor belt level. I predicted that the further we go, the more worlds with the conveyor belt levels we will see, but I didn't expect to see as much of them as we saw here. And the only PVZ1 plant we had here was Walnut. Poor Shagrat, he doesn't deserve to see that. Day 6 I started to use more and more roof plants here, because without them, beating that world would be unreal. There is no other way for me to fight with the excavator zombies. But again, I still believe that PvZ2 is beatable with only PvZ1 plants, especially if we count premium plants as well. Day 7 Here is another problem for me. The parasol zombie. So to deal with her, I have to take a repeater and plant a column of it to be sure that parasol zombie won't eat my catapults. The kernel pult, repeater and winter melon are an amazing combo for that world. Day 8 Don't let the zombies trample over the weird flowers. On my very first attempt, I tried to beat it without the iceberg latches. But then, I realized that it was unreal. And on the next attempt, when I used it, everything went fine. And we easily beat that level. Doesn't that prove the Iceberg Latch's supremacy? D9 was another conveyor belt level. Oh, and by the way, I like Endurian. Day 10. I decided to build two columns of double sunflowers close to the zombies. That wasn't a good idea at all. The parachute zombies ate my sunflowers and my defense line almost collapsed. But then, winter melon saved me, so I was able to rebuild my columns of sunflowers and beat that level. Day 11. Another level with three waves. I like that. Here, winter melons are everything. They are good at stopping everyone, especially zombies with the giant flying bugs. Bruh. Day 12. Only a third part of the world is completed, but we have already stuck with the gargantuan and huge wave of zombies. The main problem here is time, the lack of it. It was really hard to stabilize the situation which was near to collapse in, but right before the final wave, we managed to build an amazing defense which granted us victory. Day 13 Oh, that was an interesting conveyor belt level. Let me explain. So at first, I easily completed it with all the given plants, but then I realized that this level can be beaten with only PvZ1 plants. I spent more than 30 minutes to complete it without the PvZ2 plants. That was quite challenging. On the fifth attempt, I finally managed to finish it, and I was really happy about it. Now, I was sure that we can continue our challenge, because I did everything that I could. 
day 14. Survive the zombie attack with the given plans. Well, I have easily completed it. I just had to plant some local plants and that's all. Day 15. I had to protect a key. With the help of the winter melons, that level was quite easy to beat. All you have to do is to build two columns of winter melons and that's all. Day 16 was the conveyor belt level. At the end of that day, we defeated five gargantuars simultaneously. Okay, the local plants aren't so bad, but I wouldn't use them anywhere else except the lost city. Day 17. The very first attempt was really bad. I didn't expect Imp Porter to be so difficult to destroy. But even on the second attempt, I lost a lawnmower because I didn't have enough sun to plant anything here to stop the excavator zombie. Plus, I used only Winter Melon as the attacking plant. That was truly an interesting experience. The 18 was a typical conveyor belt level. I don't understand why did they make so many filler levels in that world. Anyway, let's just skip it. Day 19. Another level where everything went wrong right from the beginning. On my second attempt, I didn't repeat the same mistakes and I was even able to build a column of winter melons in such a risky place. Day 20. The level began with a parachute rain. That was something new, but I stopped both of those zombies with a cherry bomb. And just as usual, I built one but perfect column of plants. A kernel pulled, a cabbage pulled, winter melon and even a repeater. Wow. But on the other columns, well, I had only a kernel pulled. Nice, I guess. But in the end, I was able to plant the same columns of plants everywhere. Day 21. Yay. They gave me a chance to play with a toadstool. What a funny plant. I love it so much. Man, it didn't even fit with my rules, but I got so much pleasure while beating it. Truly one of the best levels in the Lost City. Day 22. Can I impress you if I said that this level is beatable with only PvZ1 plants? I just planted different rooms on those buttons and zombies were successfully wiped out from my loan. Day 23. This is where the hardness started to feel much. I have only started to plant my first pulls and boom, here is the first wave after which we see a gargantuar. Only two things have saved me during that level the torchwoods and tall nuts. Without them, it would be impossible. The hordes of zombies became even larger, so as a result, I was left only with one lone mower. Wow, I didn't expect to play such a hard level here in the Lost City. Day 24. Don't let the zombies trample over the weird flowers. That level was much easier than the previous one, and I was even able to build a column of winter melons. What a success! Day 25 was so easy that I beat it in less than 2 minutes. Day 26. I have successfully rented a snow pea. Man, that guy is really useful here. If you have a chance to use the snow pea, I highly recommend you do it. After beating that level, I received the weirdest PVZ2 plant. The gold leaf. I don't know why, but this thing costs not 75 cents or not 100 cents, it costs 80 cents. Seriously, why the hell did they put this price on it? Can anyone explain it to me, please? Day 27. What a good opportunity to rent a cactus. This is truly the best plan for that world because it fixes the problem of damaging every single type of zombie here. Day 28. Another bowling level which is beatable with only PvZ1 plants. I have successfully destroyed everyone, but in the end I found myself in a dead end situation. I didn't have any option to defeat the zombies, so at that stage that level became endless. I didn't find anything better than zapping boss of these tents. Day 29. What a weird level. At first I almost beat it, but then Gargantuar in the top left corner gave me no chance. Well, at least the second attempt was quite successful and I managed to build a good defense line here. Day 30. Renting Cactus was the only hope here, because that level was pretty much hard, especially if we take a look on a mountain variety of zombies that appeared on that day. Even with Cactus, I was left only with one lone mover in the end. Day 31. The very last level before the fight was Zambas. I decided that the best strategy for that level would be using only a toadstool. Cause come on. 
on, that frog dude looks pretty funny, but let's be honest, that level was hard as well. Before day 32, I wanna share my feelings about that world. The last city left me was a good precipitate. It had a balanced amount of different types of levels, but I was a bit upset because I didn't see any last 10 days. Anyway, the world didn't focus only on one mechanic, as the frostbite caves did it. I'm also glad that in the end, Lost City gave me a challenge to beat some of its levels. Day 13 and day 21 were really an amazing experience. And of course, the level design is sick. The Plants vs Zombies 2 is about time. Day 32. Even using all of the plants from the conveyor belt, I beat the Zombas not from the very first attempt. The button mechanic was another challenge while beating it. As for now, it is the best Zombas compared with 4 previous levels. On the second attempt, I have successfully beat him. Anyways, the key is mine and that means that we are moving to the far future. This time it will be 24 juicy levels. And here, my girlfriend will play a major role in beating that world. Trust me, that's gonna be cute and really interesting. I'm actually excited about our next time adventure.